Hello everybody, welcome to this Unreal Engine 4 tutorial about light propagation. So right now I'm just opening up a quick brand new project, it's going to be default. You can of course add this to an existing project, um, because all you have to do is really just change a few settings. Now I'm just going to name this light, light tutorial, there we go, and save it to a desktop folder. So. I recommend just starting up a test map just so you can get the settings right so you don't have to mess up your lighting settings for an existing project already. So I'm just going to call this map and open it up. Now when using light propagation, a skylight, um, you don't need it anymore, it kind of replaces the skylight. So just put a directional light actor in, you can raise it up or whatever, but make sure it is set to movable. Now I've, um, you can add like your st uh, basic sky sphere. I'm just going to add an atmospheric fog and a quick material. Anyway, so before I build the map, let's just change a few settings right here. So what you want to search is generate mesh distance fields right here. You want to activate this. Then before you hit restart now, you want to also search for allow static lighting and you want to disable this. And this is because light propagation is completely dynamic. So now under your map, your specific map. So if you're doing this in, in a test map, you're going to have to change this world setting in your new map also. And you just really want to click uh, force no pre-computed lights. And this will make sure that you have no static lighting. Um, see, it will remove existing pre-computed lighting data. So this is just like a safety net that you have. Now, um, you can go ahead and restart the engine, but before it launches up, so let me once this launches, I'm gonna have to close it out again. Well, I won't have to because I've already uh, incorporated this line of code into my project. So let me just close that for now. So this line of code, once again, it's gonna be in the description. You just copy that. Now, where you want to go is you want to go into your your data, and then go under your engine your engine files. Now, once you're in your engine files, double click on engine, click on config, and scroll all the way down until you see console variables. You double click on this. So this line of code will not be there. It would, it would look like this. So what you want to do is you scroll all the way to the bottom and then literally right under here, you go press enter and you paste that in. Then you can either click control S or come up here to file and then click save and then exit that out. Now, the next time, depending on how large your map will be, um, or is, or your entire project file, it's going to have to compile a bunch of shaders. Now, if the loading right under there, where it was, if that gets stuck, or it seems to get stuck on 39 or 45 percent, that's just the shader compilers working, and just leave it, let it sit for like five or ten minutes, and then the project will finally load up. I've had many people in the past and just close out the project and then start a new one. It's a complete waste of time. Just let them compile and then you should be good to go. So once again, just open up the your map that you're working on. And now everything should be ready to a certain degree. Now I say that because first I have to um, add the map. But you see how the lighting is still very dark. When well, you're not completely finished, what you have to do is go into your directional light settings and click allow. Here, let me find it actually. Um, here we go. Dynamic indirect lighting. So type in indirect and then click to allow indirect lighting. And now you can see immediately off the bat that the entire shadowed area has lit up in a very soft way. Well, you can of course change the directional light and you see how it moves dynamically. So let's see what happens when we add a basic cube. The shadow is very soft compared to for disabling um, the light and everything. And it's more real time than using a skylight, which allows for different things than a skylight allows for. For example, using pre-computed lighting allows for color bounces for more realistic scenes. So as you can see right now, the, the light that's coming from the directional light or the sun is bouncing off of the red cube 
and is pasting a very, very dim um, red hue onto this white cube, as you can see right there. See? So to tweak the settings for the um, light propagation volume, just go into visual effects, drag a post processing volume over into your scene. You can center it in the scene or whatever. Um, I'm just going to extend this infinitely by scrolling all the way down to uh, settings. So now it's going to extend boundless. And you want to come under um, right here, the light propagation volume. Now you can enable all of these settings. There's more advanced settings right here where you can change like the bias or the bounce um, numbers and everything like that. But what you can do is change the intensity and the size. Now, the size is used for first expanding the amount of light, the, the, to the extent of um, the light propagation, if that makes sense. Uh, so like right here, you can see that the volume is not really extending over a certain distance, and that is way too short. Um, for example, you don't want to have a harsh lit scene and then a very harsh um, unlit scene or section of the scene. So what you can do is increase the size, but then as you increase the size, the scene becomes a bit dimmer. So then what you um, can do to compensate for that is increase the intensity to like 1.5 or 2. You don't want to overblow it where it's like almost no shadow entirely. So very subtle changes um, would work. Now, to show how, um, what's it called? To show how effective this light propagation volume can be, reflect the red light. So as you can see right now, the directional light is pointing almost directly towards the red um, surface. And as you can see, it's bouncing completely and reflecting the red light. So this um, can create very moody scenes. So that's basically it for light propagation. Um, if you have any future requests for tutorials or anything like that, please post them in the comments below. I'm going to be doing Unreal Engine 4 tutorials just like this in a very fast-paced manner so I can get you guys back to where you need to be, and that's game developing. Now I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.